Stellar Blade is currently the hottest game in the world, and it's not. Just because the character is a smoking hot cyber waifu badass in a skin suit, or because the combat is really fluid, but because it represents yet another attempt by the crazies on the left of sanity who've wormed their way into the upper echelons of the game industry's executive suites to censor and denigrate anybody who wants to just have some fun and play some games, or perhaps even look at beautiful women from time to time. I know, shock, right? But there's another aspect to it as well, and that is just how utterly based the director Hyung Tae Kim actually appears to be with his love of things that are cool. <laughs> you know, his use of aesthetic appeal to, well, appeal to everybody, his hot wife, of course, and his attitude to gaming. These are all things that gamers will appreciate when the person making the game appreciates gaming and gamers. Amazing, isn't it? Anyway, he most recently announced that he will not be including microtransactions, another blight on the industry actually, in his game, Stellar Blade. And that Stellar Blade, quote, will not require players to spend any additional money beyond what they paid for the package. I know, right? Almost as if the industry used to be better when you could just buy a game, pop it in your SNES, pop it on, and it freaking worked. Amazing, isn't it? Hey, respecting the fans worked really well for the Sonic movie, and it definitely worked for Hogwarts Legacy, and now it's working hard for Stellar Blade. Based Korean man is based. Hello, welcome back to Will of the Fans. My name is Will. See what I did there. I hope you're having a lovely, lovely day. We're going to check out an article at Bounding in the Comics in just a second about this Stellar Blade situation where Hyung Tai Kim has basically said, screw microtransactions, which I'm sorry, is just, it's like catnip to gamers. You, you said what? You said to hell with microtransactions? Marry us. <laughs> it's that simple. So wait, you're going to give us a product that you've made that you really took time and care in that has a attractive looking woman in it, fluid combat is fun to play and isn't going to try and rip us off or have mechanics shoved into it that waste our time to make us want to just part with a couple of bucks every 10 minutes to make the game more bearable after already having paid 60 or 70 dollars to own the thing in the first place. Incredible. Incredible. This it it never happens anymore. It's always the opposite. It's just you you love to see it. You just do. So if you're liking the video, like the video. Don't forget to subscribe to Will of the Fans to make sure you don't miss out on any more news, reviews, commentary, and rebellion, courtesy of moi. So here we are then at Bounding Into Comics. Stellar Blade Director rejects microtransactions, promises game will not require players to spend any additional money beyond what they paid for the package. And that instantly makes the package worth paying for. Pardon the double entendre, ladies. In continuing his seeming use of the Western video game industry's recent failures as a guide as to what to avoid with his upcoming title, Shift Up CEO and Stellar Blade director Hyung Tai Kim has promised that outside of one very specific and possible instance, the upcoming action title will feature absolutely zero microtransactions. So what's this one specific and possible instance? Are we talking about like a... A DLC or something like a one-shot purchase or something. Hmm, we'll see. Kim made this promise to players while speaking on the game's future during a recent interview as machine translated by Deepel with Korean video game news outlet Ruli Web. I don't speak Korean. I've met plenty of them though, and they seem like nice dudes. At one point during his time with the outlet, his unnamed interviewer broached the topic of how, quote, today's console titles do not end with release, as in addition to uh, content updates, including DLC releases, developers also provide balance patches if necessary. In turn, Kim affirmed, of course, if we accidentally miss something or are lacking something, we will fix it after launch. Hmm, okay. Yeah, now, look. I'm going to give this guy the benefit of the doubt because I've liked almost everything else that he has said and I like the respect he shows to gamers. But we really shouldn't even be tolerating that, guys. I mean, okay, if we absolutely have to, I guess, you know, patches to fix bugs, fine. But you should be doing your QA, like, 
right down to the minute before release to make damn sure that thing is released well on time in fact no it should end two three weeks before release 100 percent working so it should be released in working order now i don't know everything there is to know about this so there are things that can be overlooked especially as gaming is you know games are much more complicated than they used to be but um you know as i said anyway benefit of the doubt for hyung tai kim because honestly the guy's awesome uh, we'll be working on balance patches to make the game more enjoyable for those who started early so that those who come in later don't experience any inconvenience, he added. We're not sure if we'll be releasing DLC. Oh, this game will get DLC. But we're working on free updates like additional outfits. Free updates. Wow, look at that. A thank you to the people who spend quite a lot of money to own your product. To this end, the game director declared to the public, we want to make it clear at this point that Stellar Blade will not require players to spend any additional money beyond what they paid for the package. Unfortunately, albeit understandably, Kim then proceeded to note that despite his best intentions, there did exist one situation where the Shift Up team would be required to charge for DLC crossover costumes with other established franchises well yeah i mean of course eventually somebody is going to want to run around playing as eve but dressed like asuka langley saw you from evangelion or something like that but uh i mean fine yeah if if it's like a, a recognized franchise and they have to do deals with that the people who own that company and that like that property like dragon ball or star wars or something i don't know Probably more like what I said, the plug suits from Evangelion. But yeah, they're, they're going to have to pay for that. So yeah, fair enough. We have to pay a little bit as well if that's what you want. The only exception to this is if we create collaborative outfits with third-party IPs, those may be sold for a fee, clarified the producer. Also, there's no New Game Plus in the launch version, but stay tuned for that very soon. But you've got to have a New Game Plus, haven't you? As an aside... Given both this suggestion and the appealing nature of both titles' protagonists, one wonders if Stellar Blades Eve could soon find herself donning the frilled black dress of Nier Automata protagonist 2B. Yeah, exactly. Or a Bayonetta costume or, you know, something like that. Finally, Kim expanded his att uh, attentions, yes, from the game's content roadmap to the IP's overall future. Asked by RulerWeb whether Shift Up would continue to produce single-player titles with definitive endings, especially in the face of rising development costs across the industry, Kim opined, it's a very acute issue because of the rising development costs in re uh, recent years. Honestly, I get a lot of advice from people that I should make games with higher operating margins, but I think what our industry needs more than anything is a diversity of titles. Of titles, yes, not that kind of diversity. Thank you, Kim. Quote, console titles, single player titles with endings are very important in their own right. Aren't they just? Aren't they so bloody vital? Good God, no one knows this anymore. He explained it's healthier for the market to continue to make these games and for them to coexist with other genres and platforms. Yes, choice, customer choice. I'm loving this, dude. I'm loving it. Which is why Shift Up will continue to take on the console challenge. We have a strong desire to continue to make games that make the average gamer see the ending and return to reality feeling good. Yeah, remember that. Remember that, guys, when the credits used to roll and you sat back and admired yourself for a job well done, a final boss completed, and, uh, you know, just an overall feeling of satisfaction with yourself. It didn't need to go on forever. How many times have I played the same game over and over and over? I've played Ocarina of Time easily 10 times from start to finish. Final Fantasy VII, probably even more than that. Eight, four or five times. Ten, thrice, I think, including my 100% platinum file, which took like 400 hours. I'll still probably play it again, in case anybody I know wants to watch it or something. Anyway, what about Suikoden? I've played through that like 15 times. It just goes on and on and on. You get my point. Just because a game ends doesn't mean you don't want to play it again. At current, Stellar Blade is set to 12 jump and slash its way exclusively onto PlayStation 5 consoles on April 26th. And that is really the only problem facing um, Stellar Blade at the moment is the fact that it's going to be a PS5 exclusive uh, for at least the foreseeable future. No one seems to have a concrete date um of the exclusivity period for stellar blade um but if if you know let me know in the comment section down below 
as well as letting me know how you feel about all of this in the comment section down below. I think it's good news. I'm pretty happy with it myself, but let me know. And don't forget to like this video if you've enjoyed it. And subscribe to Will of the Fans if you'd like to see a bit more of me. I'd like to see more of you. I will be back with another video for you very, very soon. But until then, remember to question everything, respect the fans, and I'll chat to you next time.